Hi, my name is Avinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play Gaia Project. What I love the most in Gaia Project is how varied the games are. The factions are quite unique, so they're a lot of fun to play. There are only six rounds, so you do have a limited amount of time to do everything you need to do. So it's really exciting. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. In Gaia Project, you play a faction striving to peacefully settle in the Terra Mystica galaxy by making planets around you habitable. To do that, you need to build mines and upgrade them into better structures. At the same time, you will also form federations and discover new technologies to improve your skills and gain more rewards. After six rounds, you add the points you've gained throughout the game with the end of game rewards. The player with the most points wins the game. Let me start by showing you the components and how to set up the game, starting with your player board. At the beginning of the game, players pick the first player in any way they like, and then each player will pick one of the seven faction boards in clockwise order and receive the set of structures matching that color. Players pick the faction they prefer from the two sides. All these factions have special powers or abilities, which I'll explain later. For now, place your eight mines, four trading stations, the Planetary Institute, the three research labs, and the two academies like this on your faction board. Place the number of power tokens shown on the power cycle area one and two. Here it is two and four. In this game, power constantly cycles through areas one, two, and three. You can charge, you can gain, you can spend, and you can discard power. You charge power when you see this purple arrow symbol. Move the corresponding amount of power tokens from area one to two or two to three. You can only use the power when it is fully charged in area three. When you spend it, it moves back to area one. You always charge the lowest power first. So if let's say you gain four powers, you first move two tokens from area one to area two, as you can only move from area two to three once area one is empty. The only way to move power from area two to area three if you still have tokens in area one, is to discard power as shown here. Then for each token you move to area three, you discard one from your power cycle. You can always spend the power you have in area three, even if you have power in areas one or two. Once all power tokens are in area three, you can't charge more power. The only way you gain more tokens is through various effects during the game, always marked by this purple symbol with a black background, as you add the new power into area one, which is black. Now let's finish setting up the player board. Place your seven tokens, the three Gaia formers, and 25 satellites near your board for easy access. Take the two credit markers, one ore and one knowledge marker and place them on their respective color on your resource track. If your faction has a QIC below its name, add one cube onto your board here. Some factions also take some faction specific components. The Taclon place the Brainstone in the area one of their power cycle. The Gleans take the Gleans Federation token and the Ivids place the six space stations near their player board. Now that players have their individual components, let's finish setting up the other board, starting by building the game board. Assemble seven to 10 sectors, depending on the number of players. Now for the first few games, my recommendation is to follow what the rules say on page four for the assembly of the board. Today, I'll show you a three player game. Otherwise, the 10 space tiles allow for many board configurations. Assemble them as you wish, making sure to align the stars on each edge. At this stage, players can assemble the board together whichever way they prefer. Now, let's take the research board and put it close by and then take the nine standard tech tiles, the ones that have a green symbol on the back. Shuffle them and place them randomly face up on the nine tech spaces at the bottom of the research board. Then sort out the remaining tech tokens and place three more of the same tech on each space so you have nine stacks of four tiles each. Shuffle the 15 advanced tech tiles and then randomly place one on each of the research areas between level four and five. Then you return the others to the box. 
Take all the Federation tokens and set aside the one for the Glean faction, we won't use them. Then randomly pick one of the remaining tokens, place it on level 5 of the terraforming track, sort and stack the remaining federations and place them near the board. Each player puts one token at the start of each of the six tech tracks. Check this area of your player board to see if you have a research bonus. If it shows a research area, move your marker to level one and take the corresponding bonus if it has a white outline and a star. It can be two more ore or an additional QAC token or a Gaia former and place it on your player board. Finally, place your seventh token on the 10 of the point tracker. Now we're going to set up the scoring board as it's different for every game. Randomly pick six of the 10 round scoring tiles and place one on each location from one to six. Each of them represents a bonus players can score during that round. Finally, shuffle the six final scoring tiles and randomly place one tile face up on the right of each green ranking track. These are bonuses players will compete to score at the end of the game. Each player places a satellite cube to mark their current score on the scoring board. Keep the QIC, the power, the record, the action tokens and the lost planet nearby for easy access. Now it's time to have a look at the round boosters. There's a total of 10 round boosters in Gaia Project. They provide additional abilities which can be used either at the beginning, the end or during the round. Randomly select three more round boosters than there are players. So today, six round boosters for this three player game. Now it's time to place the first structures on the board. The color of your faction matches the color of your home planet and your home planet is on the drawing on your faction board. Brown are swamps, red are oxide, Black are titanium, blue are terra, yellow are desert, white are ice, and orange are volcanic planets. For your first few games, I recommend you follow the setup in the rulebook on page 7. It tells you uh, factions and where to place your first mines on a 2, 3, and 4 play game. Otherwise, starting from the first player and in clockwise order, each faction places one mine on any home planet that is matching their colour. You take the mine from your faction board, always picking from the leftmost first. Then the last player places a second mine and going counterclockwise, each faction places their second mine so that the first player is the last to place the second mine. Two factions have a different starting condition. The Xenos place their third mine last, after all players have placed their second mine. And the Ivids place last, even after the Xenos, and only place their planetary institute on any red planet. Now that we've set up the game, let's have a look at what makes each faction unique. Depending on your home planet, here, you can see how similar other planets are to your home planet and how much terraforming is required to occupy it. Then here is your starting bonus on the research board. Later in the game, once you build your planetary institute, you will be able to access special powers unique to your faction. These powers make the factions really cool and exciting. Check out pages 20 and 21 of the rules to familiarize yourself with all their intricacies. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to explain the six ways you can score points throughout the game and also at the end of the sixth and final round. Every time you see that symbol, you can score victory points. Each of the six rounds have a scoring tile which gives you points for specific actions during that round. Some standard techs also award victory points, like this one to score seven points once, or this one every time you build a mine. All these advanced techs also let you score points, these as you pick them up, and these during your turn, and those at the end of your turn. You also score 12, 8, 7, or 6 victory points when founding the federations. Five out of 10 round boosters reward specific buildings completed when you pass. It can be your number of mines, trading stations, research labs, or planetary institute and academy, or structures on Gaia planets. Players also score if they are on the third, fourth, or fifth level of a research track. You score four points at level three, eight points at four, and 12 points of each marker at level five. This can give quite a lot of points. At the end of the game, you can score two end of game scoring tiles. They can reward the top three players for building the most structures, the most satellites, the most federations on the most different planets or space sectors or structures on Gaia planets. Now we are ready to start playing. Yay. Each player will pick a round booster starting from the last player and proceeding counterclockwise so that the first player picks last. Every time you see an open hand symbol like this, 
It means you score this at the beginning of the round during the income phase. And the red symbol like this is scored at the end of the round once you pass. So with all these, you get more resources at the beginning of your round, like one more ore from those, two or four more credits from those, one more knowledge on these two, one QIC on this one. You charge two or four energies on these and you gain two energies for this one. These two will give you one extra action during your turn, one free level of terraforming or three extra navigation range. Finally, these five boosters will reward you for the number of mines, trading stations, labs, planetary institute or academy or Gaia planets you own at the end of the round. Once all players have picked one round booster, we can start the first round. Now, each round consists of four phases. You have the income phase, then you have the Gaia phase, then you have the action phase, which takes most of the game, and then you have the cleanup phase. We will start with all players taking the income all at the same time. And there goes Peter. <laughs> Every time you see this open hand, resolve it during the income phase. It shows on the structures you've built, the round booster you've chosen, and the advancement of your research. Most income is revealed on your faction board as you build more structures. The ore comes from your mine track, the credits from your trading station track, and the knowledge from your research labs and one of your academies. The other academy gives you a special action to gain one QIC during your turn. Once you've built your planetary institute, you'll gain more power as well as your faction-specific power. Add the newly gained income to your resource track. So here we have three ore, one knowledge and two credits. Remember that you start with 15 for a maximum of 30 credits. If you have them, don't forget to also add the income from your standard tags or your economy or science tracks. Now it's time for the second phase of the round, the Gaia phase. Now this is only played from the second round onwards. If you have power tokens in your Gaia area, the green one near your power cycle, move them back into your area one or two if you play the Terrans. If one of your Gaia formers is on a transdim planet, place a Gaia token on that planet. The Gaia former will remain there until you build a mine on that planet. Now it's time to look at the third phase of the round, the action phase. This is where we're going to spend most of the game. Starting from the first player, each player takes one action at a time. There are eight possible actions and they are all described in this overview card, but we're going to have a look at all of them now. The first action you can take is to colonize a new planet and build a mine. The mines are the only structures you're able to build. Any other structure are upgrades from these. You can only build mines on planets without a structure, which are accessible and which are habitable. A planet is accessible if it is adjacent to a planet where you already have a structure or if it is within your navigation range. You can also spend QIC tokens to increase your range by two spaces for each QIC spent. You start the game with a navigation range of one. So if you use one QIC, you could reach planets three hexes away. Or if you use a plus three range, you would reach planets four hexes away. Now let's have a look at how to make a planet habitable. Planet is habitable if it is your home planet type. If it is not, you will need to pay to transform it. Refer to your faction board to see how much you need to transform that planet. That cost is one, two, or three terraforming steps, depending on the planets you transform, and you buy each terraforming step by spending three, two, or one ore, depending where you are on the terraforming track. You can gain terraforming steps from round boosters, special powers, basically wherever you see the symbol. Now, you can add them together as long as they don't come from two separate actions. Also, if, for example, you need one terraforming steps and you have two, you will lose the leftover. Once you've paid to terraform the planet into your home planet, you can build a mine on it. This is part of the same action and you need to pay the cost of the mine, which for most factions is one ore and two credits. Remember to always take the leftmost mine available from your faction board. So to build a mine, you must be able to reach it, to transform it, and to build in the same turn. Now, let's have a look at three planet types that are not home planets and work a little bit differently. Those are the Gaia planets, the Transdim, and the Lost Planet. When you reach the fifth level of the navigation track, you discover the Lost Planet. Place it within your standard navigation reach on an empty hex. It comes with your mine already built in. To remember it's yours, place a satellite cube on it. It won't count in your satellite count, 
but will count as a structure and as a new planet type. Let's look at the Gaia planets. You can build a mine at the standard cost. You don't need to transform it, but you will need to pay a QIC to do so. Finally, you have the transdim planets. You cannot build directly on them or terraform them like other planets. You first need to have transformed the transdim planet into a Gaia planet and have one of your Gaia formers on it. You can later replace it with one of your mines. When you do, return the Gaia former to your player board, pay the normal cost of the mine without any extra QIC this time. Now, the second action you can take in the game is how to transform a transdim planet into a Gaia planet using the Gaia project. To start a Gaia project, you must first be within navigation range of an empty transdim planet with no Gaia former on it. Then you need to have a Gaia former already on your player board. You gain the Gaia formers from the Gaia project track on the research board, the first at level one, then one more at level three, and the third one at level four. Finally, you need to be able to spend the necessary power. At first, it costs six power, which you move from any power area into your Gaia area. Later, when you reach level three and four of the Gaia project track, it gets progressively cheaper, down to four and three powers respectively. And that's the end of the Gaia project action. Note that the Gaia former does not count as a structure, so the planet is not yet colonized, so it won't count towards the planet type or the number of structures. Now, let's have a look at the third action on how to upgrade your buildings. Every other structure upgrades from the mines. You can see on the board what is the next upgrade possible. Mines upgrade into trading stations, which can upgrade into a planetary institute or research labs, while research labs can only upgrade into academies. Pay the cost indicated on the board, put the old building back on the faction board and take the leftmost new building. For the academies, you can choose the one you want to place first. The cost of trading stations can vary. If the upgraded mine is next to the structure of an opponent, the trading station costs half the credits. To be next to a neighbor means to be adjacent or within two spaces away from a neighbor. If you're too far, pay the full credit cost. Also, the Planetary Institute gives access to a faction-specific power. Remember that upgrading a building changes your next income production. Finally, when upgrading into a research lab or academy, you also gain one tech immediately. These techs give you various benefits that will remain with you until the end of the game. Pick the tech that you want and you will also go up in one of the tracks. If you take one of those six techs, you go up the track immediately above it. However, if you pick one of these three techs, you can go up any track. The techs are very powerful and let you gain better income or give you immediate benefits like seven points or one ore and one QIC or increase the power value of your academies and planetary institute up to full power points whenever you place a mine on a Gaia planet later in the game. It can also give you a new power action or knowledge based on how many different planet types you've already colonized. Note that you can pick each tech once per game, so choose carefully. And just like you pick a standard tech, you could decide to pick an advanced tech if you meet a few more conditions. You must have a research token on level four or five near the tech you want to pick. You also need to have a federation token with its green side face up. The 12 victory points does not work for this. You also must have at least one uncovered standard tech tile as you will need it to place your advanced tech on top of it. Now, don't forget that like with any other tech, you should go up one level when you take an advanced tech. You can do this in any tech track you want. There's only one of each advanced tech, so it's whoever claims it first. Now, have a look at the back of the rule book to see what cool things they do. Now, the fourth action is how to form a federation. Let's have a look at that. Federations are founded automatically by combining the power value of buildings up to seven. You can see on your player board that each structure has a power value. Mines have a power value of one, trading stations and research labs two, and the planetary institute and academies, the highest value of three. Remember that if you have that tech, your academies and planetary institute are worth four instead of three. To connect your buildings, place satellites between them using as few satellites as required. Use the least possible number. Pay for each satellite by taking one power out of your player board. If you don't need any satellite, place this marker. Note that to build a new federation after that, you need to build from structures at least one space away from the previous federation. 
you will need to start afresh as you cannot expand from structures which are directly adjacent to an existing federation. This would only make the previous federation bigger. When you found a federation, pick one of the remaining six federation tiles, gain its one-time bonus. Unlike Tex, you can pick several times the same federation. The fifth action is to spend four knowledge to go up one research level. Now I'm going to show you what each track does. The blue track is the science track. It's to collect more knowledge during income. Like all tracks, you also charge three powers when upgrading from level two to three. When you reach level five, you can collect nine knowledge points. Every time you see this white highlight with a starburst, it's an immediate collection. Like all other tracks, to get to level five, you must first flip the green side of a federation. And once one player is there, other players cannot pass level four. On the economy track, you improve your income for ore, credits, and power. On level five, immediately collect three ore, six credits, and upgrade six powers. We've already seen most of the Gaia project track. Just keep in mind that here you add three new power tokens to area one, and at level five, you score four victory points plus one victory point for each Gaia planet where you have a structure. The artificial intelligence track lets you gain QIC tokens. With the navigation track, you improve your navigation range up to four and also get to pick up some QIC on the way. On level five, you pick up the lost planet I've explained earlier. Finally, the terraforming track reduces the cost of terraforming steps from three to one ore. You also get to pick up some ore along the way and at level five, you pick up the federation randomly placed during setup. Remember that you have to have a federation before you reach level five. You can't use the one you're picking up. Now, the six action are the power and QIC actions that you can take from the board. These are very powerful and worth using as often as possible. To take a QIC action, discard that number of QIC tokens, two, three, or four, and place an action marker over it. For the power actions, move the number of power tokens indicated here from area three to area one. They are used once per round on a first-come, first-served basis, so place a marker on it once you've taken it. Remember that you can charge power that you need through the income phase with round boosters, some standard text, and when you found a federation. You can also do this with two free actions, sacrifice and conversion, which lets you charge or gain power, and you can do this and it doesn't count as an action. As shown here, you can sacrifice power to charge power from area two to area three. For each token you move this way, you discard one token from area two. All the conversions are shown on this chart on your faction board. Like for instance, here you can spend four energy to get one QIC. You can also spend one QIC to increase your range plus two, or you can spend one ore to gain one energy. You can perform as many free actions as you want, either before you take your action or after, but you cannot do this during the income or Gaia phases. Now, another important rule to note uh, regarding power is that you may decide to charge power when one of your neighbors builds or upgrades a structure. Now, this will not depend on what they are doing, but it will depend on the structures that you have. Now, let me explain. When your neighbor builds a structure directly adjacent or one space away from you, you can choose to charge power. That power is based on the power value of your buildings. So for instance, the blue player builds a mine here, so the brown player can charge three energy from his academy. But that power costs victory points, one less than the energy charged. In this other example, blue upgrades and brown has two buildings in range. He must pick his highest value building. Here, he would charge two energies and lose one victory point. Now, if blue had built a mine here, it'd be great for brown as he would charge one energy for free. Players always have a choice to take that power. It's never mandatory. Also, the player who is building does not get the benefits. It's only the other players who gain the power. And it's not one of those where you have the option to take partial power. It's an all or nothing. Now, let me show you the seventh type of action, which is the special actions. You get them during the game from these two round boosters, this standard tech, those three advanced techs, this academy, and some planetary institutes. They cost nothing and can be played at any time once per round. The eighth action is when you don't have any more actions to take or you want to pass. 
that's the end of your round and you can't take any more actions. The first player to pass will take the first player marker for the next round. At the end of your round, immediately return your round booster. Don't forget to score the end of round victory points if any, and pick one of the available round boosters. You cannot pick the booster you've just used. Flip your new round booster until the next income phase to show you have passed. This marks the end of your turn. Note that you can keep as many resources as you want from the previous round. Once all the players have passed, you start the fourth and last phase of the round, the cleanup phase. Turn this round's scoring tile face down. Refresh all the action tokens from the research board, your player board, your technologies. Flip back your round booster and take a new action marker if needed. After all this, all players can take the next round's income phase. Let me tell you about a different end of round rule, which I think is better. In the standard rules, the playing order is set in clockwise order, starting from the first player who passed. That is not necessarily fair because it doesn't match the actual order the other players passed. Instead, you can keep track of the passing order by using this turn order card. When a player passes, they shift their token to the other column on the topmost available spot. The next turn will follow that turn order. To make sure you understand that this game isn't that complicated, let's run through a few turns. It's Brown's turn and he upgrades the research lab into an academy. Blue could also charge two powers and orange three, but they both refuse. Brown takes the four credit income technology and goes up one level on the QIC track and collects two QIC tokens and charges three powers. Orange goes second and spends one QIC token to add plus two to its navigation range, then spends power to buy the two terraforming special action to transform this planet and build one mine for one ore and two credits. He goes up this end of game tracker and scores a round bonus of two points. Then it's Blue's turn and he decides to transform his Gaia former there into a mine and returns the Gaia former to his board and adds to his end of game tracker and two points for the mine. Brown, with his navigation range of four, reaches this planet and builds a mine, also scoring two points from the round bonus and up the end of game tracker. Orange upgrades his lab into an academy and picks up this technology which makes him move up one level, this track, and picks up one QIC. The blue transforms this planet with three ore and builds a mine, paying one ore and two credits. And he also scores the round bonus and goes up the end of game tracker. Brown refuses to charge three powers as he doesn't want to lose two points. Brown spends three QIC to repeat the benefit of this 12 victory point federation. With his newly acquired upgrade, Orange now has seven points here and can found a federation, placing two satellites, discarding two power tokens, and taking this federation token. Takes one QIC and scores eight points. Blue decides to pass, returns his round booster, scores the end of round bonuses, and picks up a new booster. The other players keep taking actions until everyone has passed. Now let's look at a possible end of game scoring. Now on the research board, the brown scores 12 plus 8 plus 12, that's 32 points. The orange has 16 points and the blue has 8 points. Finally, the blue is the only one with resources left and scores 1 point for his 3 knowledge. The player with the most points, in this case the brown, wins the game. In case of a tie, there can be more than one winner. Now my tips to win at Gaia Project are you need to plan ahead and chart your own path to see what you're going to do during the six rounds. Take into account the round bonuses, what are the end of game as well, uh, objectives. Have a look what technologies, the round boosters, and even what special ability your faction has. Make sure your next income, you have enough ore and credits, because if you don't have enough, it'll be a really short round. Gaia projects are tricky and they cost time and power, so just make sure that you're going to really benefit from them. To get your economy running, you need to put structures on the map, so try to expand early. Also, the economy track is a very good source of income as well. Not only do neighbors make your trading stations cheaper, they can also give you a lot of passive power, so don't stay too isolated. Later in the game, you may start running out of structures, so keep an eye on what you want to do and that you have the structures to do it. Have a look at synergies that you can find. So for example, in some instances, you might have 
uh, round bonuses that match really well with the technologies and you can really make a lot of points that way. So that's how you play Gaia Project. It takes a little bit of time to learn all the rules, but once you know them, it's quite easy to play. It's got a lot of depth of strategy. It's one of the most competitive games, although there is no battle in the game, and it's just a lot of fun. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.